we watched the BBC interview with uh, Musk, right? And he goes up and the guy opens up the question with, why did you agree to do this interview? He says, well, I don't know, what's the name of the BBC? And he's trying to mock them and all this stuff. And there's a part of it where, you know, he calls them out for the mistakes they made. Yeah. And if you go to the bottom of the interview on BBC, you'll see comment section saying, why'd you cut that out? Because yeah. Musk puts it on Twitter, but they didn't put it in the interview. Yeah. Then you watch the interview with, the, uh, 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 with you. The first question they ask you was, uh, uh, what's the first question? Hey, you've been accused of serious uh, crimes. rape or something like that. Uh, uh, you know, right off the bat, they ask that question of you. And then you see the interview, Lucy Williamson, I believe her first question was, you're facing some very serious allegations. Have you raped anybody? That's the open question that they ask you. And the video they put up, the first one, they take it down. The second video they put up, that's 12 minutes, like the highlight one, they turn, uh, the comment section is open. There's 80,000 plus comments there. Then you look at Philip Schofield. Yeah. You just brought up Philip Schofield. For people that don't know who Philip Schofield, do you mind explaining to people who he is? Yeah, he was a TV presenter in England. He was very famous. He ran the morning show. And he was grooming children for a very long time. And all the staff knew about it. And the people who worked on the show with them were being groomed by him. And everybody knew. And it was all a big ha-ha-ha joke. And now he's come out saying, oh, please don't pick on me. I feel sad. And the media is saying, I'll leave the guy alone. He, he, he is, uh, when you go look up his Wikipedia, it says he rose to prominence as children's BBC continuity presenter from 85 to 87. Yep. Then went on to do programs on BBC and ITV for going live this morning, Dancing on Ice, All Star Mr. and Mrs., The Cube, and a bunch of other things. And they interview him, okay? While he's going through the mess, uh, 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 you know, after 27 years of being married, this one guy that he groomed since 10 years old, his name is uh, McGreevy, I yep. want to say, something McGreevy, yep. uh, that he's uh, uh, going through the process. Matthew McGreevy, they met at 10 years old at a theater group. At 15 years old, Philip follows him on Twitter. Yep. While the kid is 15, he follows him on Twitter. Yep. The guy celebrates it. Long story short, L Ruth Langsford, they work together with. She files a complaint. Then right after filing the complaint, he, uh, McGreevy gets fired. Then he has to take a break. Then he comes out after 27 years telling his wife, you know, and hey, I'm, I'm gay, I'm coming out of the closet. He's got two daughters. But there's a part of it where Matthew calls his wife and says, hey, yeah. your husband and I had an affair together when I was 19 the first time and 20 and all. Yeah. Nobody knows if it was before or not. The interesting thing about him is his brother, Timothy Schofield, I don't know if you know about his brother. Oh, what, the one who's in jail for being a pedophile? was convicted of 11 sexual offenses involving a child between October 2016 and 2019, including two sexual activity with a child. Here's how the interview started. First question, the guy asked him. He says, you've had quite a week. How are you? Opening question. Unbelievable. Versus the question they ask you on the opening, right? And then he turns around and says, the media's interest in the affair was motivated partly because of my homo, because of homophobia, homophobia, alleging that an affair with a much younger woman would have not generated such a scandal. So he gets protected, yep. and he says, all those people who write those, uh, write, write those stuff, do they ever think that there's actually a person on the other end, right? This is proven, by the way, this is the part where even when somebody's watching you and saying, why are they taking him to court? Maybe he did something. Why are they taking Trump to court? Maybe he did something. Why are they taking this guy? He must have done something. There must have been something there, right? It's stuff like this, BBC does. If BBC are watching this, right, and I want to kind of remind you of your mission statement that you have on your website. We're going to put the link below to your mission statement. You can go find it. Here's what your mission statement is, BBC. This is why you've lost some credibility the last couple of years. To act in public interest, serving all audiences through the provision of impartial, keyword impartial, high quality and distinctive output and services which inform, educate, and entertain. You say you inform, educate, you entertain, yet you conceal, misinform, and your content's quite frankly boring. You're cherry picking on people that you're talking to. So a message like that gets the average person to say, everything with you is allegedly, everything he did is proven, his brother is proven, yet let's leave him alone, poor guy, let's target him. This is where their argument has leaks in it. Oh, somebody I, like you can tear it up. Absolutely. Philip is part of the club, and I'm not. And, and this is the thing. I'm a mentally resilient person, right? 14 months they've attacked me. I'm not going to sit and complain about that because that's not how I operate as a man. 14 months they've complained about me. If you look in, if you type Romania, human trafficking, you type in any of these things, my name comes up, my face, I'm a bad person. I've lost all my bank accounts. 
I've lost all my social media accounts. I've been vilified all across the matrix in every single possible way. They print my face every single day with something negative next to it daily. Nobody gives a shit about my mental health, right? Because I'm the enemy. And what's scary about this is Lucy Williamson herself, she was begging me for an interview. The BBC were begging me for an interview. I don't need any of these people. The only reason I even sat down with the BBC is because they were begging me. I can go and just say my own words and get plenty of views, right? But the whole time I was in jail, they're begging me for an interview. Can we speak to them on the phone? Maybe you can give an interview from jail. Can we have an interview? Please, 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 please. And I was saying, why do I want to talk to the BBC? And the BBC were saying, no, we don't want to do a hit piece. We want to come across, we want to be impartial. This is what they're telling This is what they're telling me. We want to be impartial. We believe there's a side of the story that hasn't been told. We're really, interesting in, we're really interested in some of the... Uh, let's say, what's the word? I don't want to get this wrong. Inconsistencies in the Romanian justice system. We're very interested in his side of the story. There's been enough hit pieces. We want to tell the other side. We want to hear Andrew Tate's story. And I said, no, on repeat. Then they sent me a list of questions. I didn't even ask for a list of, a list of questions. That's not who I am. I don't have to script. I never asked for a list of questions. They sent me a list of questions. Here's what we're going to ask. It's about his mental health. It's about the Romanian justice system. It's about the fact he hasn't been charged. His liberty has been deprived. All this stuff. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Maybe it's a bit interesting. And the Matrix is obviously printing lies about me. And these are some interesting questions from the Matrix for the first time ever. OK. They walk in here all smiles and happy. All smiley faces trying to take me off guard. I already had my list of questions, right? It's all gonna be nice and easy. I sit down and they instantly attack me. They put the cameras on first and they attack me, expecting mm. me to stutter and make a fool of myself. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, they tried to sucker punch me. I'm in the club and they're my friends shaking my hand and they tried to hit, hit me and knock me out. And this is the thing that's so amazing about it. Yes, I destroyed the BBC, but of course I did because I'm smarter than all of them. But why should I have to rely on my wit and intellect to destroy BBC with their research team and their plan their deliberate plan to try and annihilate my, not only my credibility, but my life. They are trying to put me back in jail, these people. They're not, they're not dishonest. They're genuinely evil and they don't give a shit. And so why should I even sit there and entertain them? I believe I could slip every single sucker punch they throw at me for the rest of human time. I could sit with any of these clowns and no matter who they sit with, with their mm. research team, whatever garbage they come up with, I'll make a fool of all of them. But why am I even entertaining them anymore? What's the point? That was the last chance I gave mainstream media. They lied for months to get that interview with me. Completely dishonest, head to toe. And like you said, they sit with Philip. Are you okay? Are you okay? We heard your mom's upset, that poor old lady. Maybe everyone should stop talking about it because his mom's upset. Let's not talk about it anymore because his mother's old. You're either part of the club or you're not. You have to sell your sanity nowadays. If you sell your sanity, you're afforded protections. That's the reality of it because if you're a sane thinking person, you don't buy their bullshit. And that's what upsets them. They don't want anybody who thinks for themselves. They need you to not, they want you to believe exactly what's on the television screen. Believe in COVID. It's COVID now. It's COVID now. Oh, Putin's invaded Ukraine. Putin's cured COVID now. Now it's Ukraine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. Till the next thing comes. It, it, it's absolutely asinine. Did any of the questions that they sent you ahead of time? Zero. By, by the way, we didn't, there was no. No, that's not how that we operate. Us at a time of whatsoever. Did they ask you any of the questions they Zero. said they were going to ask you? Zero. They start with an attack and it yeah. became a battle instantly. Did they ask you at any point what jail was like, Zero. what your mental health was like? Zero. Uh, how, like, you completely missed the mark when everyone wants to know what was jail like. Well, but and they don't even ask you that question. But this is what's so interesting about it. These people are so detached from reality because they are genuinely detached from reality. They think that finding a video I made eight years ago, a four hour speech I made eight years ago and finding one line of it without context that can be misconstrued. They think that sitting down with me and, and saying that to me is an aha moment. Nobody cares mm -hmm. because you're taken out of context one. And I said, you're taking things out of context because I'm not taking it out of context. I said, if you're presenting it without context, that's taking it out of context. That's what it is. You're lying by omission. I said that to her after the camera's off and she looked at me because she didn't understand. When you omit details, when you refuse to put in all of the details, you can lie by including one detail which may happen to be true. You can tell the truth and miss all the details around the truth and you are lying by omission. You're lying by omission. And you're sitting here saying, oh, you said this eight years ago. Nobody cares because they know me and they know I didn't mean it in that way and they know it's taken out of context and they know that it's an old video on the internet and it's not even an aha moment they think it is but they just want to sit with you for an hour, attack you and attack you and attack you, wait for you to make one mistake. If I would have stuttered or made a single mistake, that's the only three minutes they would have shown. That's all they want. They want that one hour, then they take the little bit. With me, they cut it down to 12 minutes, they look terrible in all of it. But if I would have made a single mistake, it would have been the only bit they shown. That's all they care about. 
fake news. Did you tell them, did you say, I'm only doing this if I'm able to record as well? I said Because I know that's what happened with Trump as well a couple years ago. I didn't even tell them, I just recorded it. Okay, so they didn't know you were recording. They didn't know I was recording until afterwards, and then I said, that was dishonest, I'm gonna release the whole video. You told them before you released I it. I told them. There is no contract or agreement with BBC. No. Nothing was signed, it was just simply a, yeah. a, an interview. Okay, because I think that was very important when you released it, for people to see what fully was said, Versus, and by the way, you know the Philip Schofield interview that they put up, the 12 minute one that just came out? You know the comments are turned off. Of course they are. The comments are turned off, of yours are. are turned on, of his course. is turned off. Of course. Uh, and, and who knows many reasons why they would do that. But going back, going back to BBC. So, okay, they come, they want to ask the questions of you. For some of the people that maybe aren't following the story closely, but they know who you are. We're, we're in the car, we're driving, yeah. and a lot of people are asking questions. There's, we ask the drivers, like, hey, are you going to Tate's place? How do you know we're going to Tate's place? And he says, well, who's Tate? Oh, Andrew Tate. Oh, tell us about Andrew Tate. Well, this is, okay. What kind of a guy is he? He said, I actually really like him. I said, why do you think he's going through what he's going through right now? Oh, it's, because, it's always because of money. Okay, so we're at a different restaurant. So tell us, why are you going through this? Why is he going, everybody's saying a similar thing about this, right? But for those who don't know, there's three different camps. Yeah. The camp that already sees you guilty it doesn't matter what they read. So for example, this story here, you know, from BBC came out just last night, 1030. Andrew Tate choked me until I passed that UK woman claims, right? This is Alice, another anonymous name, just like Sophie, right? Yeah. But there's three camps. There's those that say, well, look, I'm already thinking he's guilty. I don't like him anyways. I need anything to get me to think he's guilty. Yeah. Whatever it takes. I don't, have to, I don't have to do my own due diligence. I just have to hear anything. Then there's a camp that's a diehard fan. There's nothing you can do that they did wrong. You can, you know, in their eyes, going to be wrong. Then you have the people in the middle that are the reasonable ones yeah. that are saying, you know what? Let me look at this. Yeah. What about this? What about that? The people in the middle may say the following question. They may say, and I may have asked this question from you last time as well. They may say, Andrew, okay, if this guy is so innocent, how can they get you to go to the dungeon for 92 days? How can they put you on house arrest? How can they do all this stuff? Yeah. If you're somebody that was born in the U.S., you lived in U.K., how come somebody else isn't coming to bail you out? You got different lawyers. How is it that they can keep doing this to you if you're not guilty? What do you say to those people? Yeah, and once again, I have to be careful what I say because of the court case, but Romania has a law, or the law in Romania is basically, if you can prove to a judge that it might have happened, they're allowed to hold you up to six months during the investigation stage. If I was guilty of anything, I would have been charged long ago. And we're gonna talk about charges soon because I, I still believe they're gonna to attempt to charge me. But we're now approaching the end of the six months they can keep me under a form of arrest for without charge. Typically in Romania, when I was first arrested, the guard said, ah, within two weeks, you'll have your indictment. I was like, two weeks? He goes, yeah, everyone gets charged quickly. It, nobody waits six months for a charge. If they arrest you, they charge you, like, like every other country, right? The fact they've waited six months and gone into my entire life and attempted to, to find something shows they don't have a case. Why I believe it happened is because they didn't have a case when they were trying to hit me with this garbage and they thought, you know what? If we put him all over the news, if we slander his name completely, if we, there was a hotline set up. If you're a girl who's been hurt by Andrew Tate, call this number mm -hmm. in the UK, a hotline. So they were attempting to use the media to find what they wanted. Months go by, months go by, months go by, case file's empty, nothing's happening. My lawyer's saying, when are we gonna close this case file? Like, yeah, we're just waiting for some papers, we're gonna close it, we're gonna close it, we're gonna close it. Around the time I was canceled, things started appearing in the case file again. They start spying on me again. Very interesting that it happened around that time. I don't know if they understood that I didn't have, I wasn't protected by the political class of the USA. I don't know what happened. They started to build this case and they spied on me for all of these months, spending millions of euros spying on me everywhere I went, trying to find evidence of a crime. Eventually they get to the end of their legal limit to spy on me and they don't have any crime. They don't have anything. So in my current court case, we have two Americans who lied, the ones who we have the conversations between them saying they're going to get an Oscar for lying to the mm -hmm. police. We have the CCTV of them coming and going. We have their Uber records showing they can travel the country freely. We have their phone calls with their mother where they're saying, yeah, he didn't hurt me, and my boyfriend caught me. We have all of it. We have all the evidence. We have those two. And then there's nobody else who could possibly even take the stand. I don't believe, as, as, as 
high level as this matrix attack is, I still don't believe a Romanian judge is going to put me in jail with, with the dossiers. I've seen it. It's garbage. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to end up in jail. But it's just taking years of my life, damaging my influence, having bad things to say about me, keeping me under control, keeping me locked in a, in a house. That's, that's all they want to do. They have no interest in the truth. There's no victims. There's no one to take the stand. Do you know who Sophie is or Alice is or no? Yeah, so the BBC, Ali. that's really interesting. So then the BBC says, well, we found victims because the BBC have done enough investigative journalism to understand that the case is garbage and they have, there's no victims. So they said, well, we found victims. They found one called Sophie first. Mm -hmm. That was a few months ago. I think I was still in jail when Sophie appeared. Is that her real name? No, that's her fake name. So they have a girl with a fake name called Sophie. They don't show her face. They, they ask me, what do you think about Sophie? How can I comment on Sophie when Sophie isn't real? First, firstly, you've made her up. Secondly, I don't know who you're talking about. You're saying that nine years ago, I was emotionally controlling? That is the most subjective garbage accusation. What does that mean? Nine years ago, I said you shouldn't party with those guys in the club. Is that what I said? I don't know what I said. I don't know who she is, if she exists at all. And they're saying nine years ago, you were emotionally controlling Sophie said so. Who's Sophie? We're not telling you. What's emotionally controlling mean? We're not telling you. What, do you, what comment do you want me to If this person even exists, which they don't, then I destroy the BBC, make it very clear to them that Sophie doesn't exist on repeat because she doesn't. And two days later, Alice appears. What's interesting about this is that DCOT, the federal agency inside of Romania, along with help from international partners, have tried so hard, spending millions of euros with federal level tools to find a victim so they can put me in jail. And they can't find anyone. But the BBC just pulls them up whenever they want. The BBC does. Where do these people come from? And I say this every single time. If anybody believes they've been wronged, male or female, by me, go to the police. Go to the police. I encourage you to go to the police. All these people say, we don't want to go to the police. We just want to stay on the news. What, is that because you're not real? Is that why? <laughs> That's pretty convenient. I mean, I thought I was a bad person. Why don't you go to the cops? Oh, because you have no evidence and it doesn't exist? That's why. Are all these accusers in the UK, not even in Romania? Not even in Romania. So Sophie and Alice are supposedly both from the UK. And Alice's story is- To correct, it's not Alice. I said Alice, it's Evie. Evie or Evie or something like that. E-V-I-E. -E. It's all yeah. made up names. It's all point. made up names. Yes. So Evie, we could call whatever name we want, but- Yeah, Evie is saying 13 years ago, I, I choked her or something. Yeah. By the way, when is the six month time limit? End of this month. Okay. And can we reference the tweet you just posted a couple days ago? I, I want to stay on the sure. show. commenting on Evie. Sure. You were going to say something about Evie. Uh, what she said 10 so she's claiming 10 years ago or 13 years ago you guys had the consensual sex the first time she comes back for the second time around according to the story she says she was being uh, 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 your hand was on her throat strangled me she was passed out for a minute and then she came back and she said I did not approve of the second time having sex after she was passed out so these stories they're making you know and then she says the guy asked the question saying, how come you didn't do any police report back then? He says, well, because it's not fully rape and it's not that because it was consensual. I kind of wanted to be there and I didn't tell anybody about it six years later. There's way too many things that doesn't give it credibility for somebody to say, I didn't do anything about it then, but six years later, I told my friends, three or six years later. Yeah, and this is the thing that's scary. If you say to any red-blooded male, 13 years ago, you had sex with a woman consensually and she's now unhappy about how that sex happened. You can get, any man on earth can get screwed with that. If this person exists at all. And like you said, she refused to go to the police if she exists. And she's saying it was consensual. I think last night they aired it on Newsnight and she literally, they said, why are you coming forward now? And I think she, this actor, the person literally said, because now he's rich and famous. They literally said those words. That's, that's what they said. Oh, because now he's rich and famous. I think it's unfair. To, it's, 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 it's asinine. I don't understand genuinely how a man can protect himself in the Western world anymore. How can you even exist anymore? If this is what they're gonna hit you with as soon as you get to a certain level of influence, there's no man on earth who's safe from this. I said this to my judges. The, I had a few male judges. I said, they could do this to you. They could do this to anyone. They could do it to you or you or me or any man watching this, any man watching this. They can put in the BBC, nine years ago you did something. They won't tell you her name. They won't give you any chance to defend yourself because you have no idea what they're fucking talking about. And they will print it on repeat until you lose your job no. and lose your bank and lose your social media. And then you're going to sit there bankrupt and depressed. And then they're just going to move on from you. And if you don't die, if you're like me, a cockroach who refuses to die, if you sit around and refuse to go away, they're going to make up a new one. It's, it's crazy. And it's genuinely scary. And you're not safe from it anywhere anymore. I will say right now on this podcast, I encourage absolutely anybody who believes I've harmed them, male or female, to go to the police with evidence and we'll go to court. Let's do it. I don't harm people. If I was harming people, I wouldn't be out here as open as I was. 
the biggest criminals and the biggest gangsters and the most heinous people on earth don't have social media. <laughs> you know this. Do I see a guy with an Instagram pretending he's a gangster? He's not a gangster. The real gangster hasn't got Instagram. <laughs> but that's the reality of it. You think I'm gonna become the most Google man in the world if I've been running around hurting people? It's absolutely insane and I think there has been a shift in the consciousness. I think, especially because of COVID and a few other things, people are starting to understand that all these people do is lie. I think people are starting to understand that. And the harder they try and hurt me with these lies, the less people believe it, which is scary for me. Like I said earlier, it's scary. They keep coming up with more garbage. The bullets keep bouncing off. So now they're sitting around going, we can't convince the world this person is a bad person. How do we get rid of him? That's the scary part. Minect is an application which allows you to take a minute to connect with influencers from all around the world. My name is Andrew Tate, and I'm available to speak directly to you on Minect. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.